Now here we are in the geometry collections map, which is going to help us see the differences between different kinds of destruction and different kinds of geometry collections and real-time destruction versus cached destruction. Just a word of warning that, at least for me, the geometry collections map took like 30 minutes to load. Um, none of the other maps took that long, so if it looks to you like Unreal Engine has frozen, it's very likely it has not. It's just doing something behind the scenes. Maybe you could find out more in Visual Studio. Um, I didn't open it through Visual Studio, so I couldn't see the log in that way. But just be warned, it takes a while. And let's look at this together. Geometry collections, of course, are a little different from static meshes, and static meshes and geometry collections do not work well together if you're trying to get them to collide with each other. You first need to take your static meshes and turn them into geometry collections. Little information about best practices. We'll just do some panning. So here we go. This is about everything being watertight. You can see here, this is showing that all the pieces of this fit together, watertight, nothing broken up, keeps your assets manageable when you're fracturing. In the case of building modules, we recommend that pivots obey Unreal Engine's gridding system. Standardizing widths and heights with the grid in mind will make life a lot easier. Right, so that's just another way to keep things watertight, have everything snap very closely together. Even if your modules share the same textures, you should apply a unique material ID per material type. When fracturing occurs, this will generate a second ID into which you can assign the appropriate internal material. So obviously, if you want the outside of your objects to look different from the inside when it's fracturing, this is key. 1D, this geometry collection was composed of two meshes. It shares the same textures, but has two separate material types. This allows both the stonework and concrete to use a unique material for the internal faces. Let's take a look at that. Great. So as you can see, the internal faces have a different material from the external. 1E, the Material Assignments Building Pack example. Five module packs make up this building facade. Each pack has multiple material instances applied. Converting to a geometry collection will consolidate any shared materials to a single ID and lower draw calls. Now, of course, the whole idea of the new chaos destruction system is it's much more efficient than the physics system that was set up before. I can tell you from a lot of experience with that, there were often issues with memory, keeping frame rate stable, draw calls, etc. So converting to a geometry collection will consolidate this, lower draw calls. So as you can see, when we're pressing this button, we're going from what it actually looks like in game to something that helps consolidate everything to fewer draw calls. So even though there are five different module packs making this up, there were many shared materials between those module packs and everything consolidated. 1F material assignments building pack example. Meshes can be converted into geometry collections in any combination. Small modules are more flexible in terms of placement, but risk higher draw calls, visible seams, and repetition when duplicated across a structure. Larger combined modules are less flexible, but can be fractured and clustered to hide seams. So these are just some pieces that are not set up for fracturing. How much do you want items to retain their original shape when being fractured? Something worth considering. So here we're going to be looking at a few pros and cons of different collision behaviors. Analytic collision volumes provide a simple representation of rigid bodies. Boxes wrap the body in a similar way to a bounding box, where spheres and cylinders are positioned to fit within the rigid body. So there you go. So outside the object versus inside the object. 2B, analytic collisions. So these are faster with a lower memory footprint, but have low accuracy. There's the box, as we saw over there, and the sphere over there. They both look pretty good to me. <laughs> 2C, as shown in 2A, a box collision will naturally wrap the entirety of the, each rigid body. Consequently, the simulation will begin with bodies intersecting, and we will often see them pushing apart. Modifying the collision reduction percentage of an asset can drastically improve this behavior. So this is just a little bit more precision. Let's see what happens. Okay, so that's it with analytic collisions. Now we're going over to implicit collisions. So this, of course, is much more precise. Instead of just a simple sphere or a cube, we're starting to generate much more fine, you could say, voxel-level detail of what's happening. 
And here's a simulation. And of course, this one is going to be more accurate with tunable performance, but a much higher memory footprint. Yeah, that looks a little more realistic than our simpler one over at uh, 2C or 2B. And here we go, level set resolution. So you can see as the grid degrades in resolution, you kind of have a simpler um, collision bounding area, but it's also gonna have a lower memory footprint. So there's your balance. I wonder if you'll be able to have this kind of set up for different uh, hardware configurations. So a higher end computer could use something like that and a lower end computer could default to that. Okay, 2G, the current implementation to allow collisions between geometry collections and static meshes is by the addition of a static mesh simulation component. The sunken box below the pillar provides an example of where this component has been added. Okay. There we go. Okay, so this is interesting because as I said at the beginning and what's been in my experience so far, I thought the static meshes did not play well with geometry collections and you have to turn everything into a geometry collection. But it appears here, maybe this is new or maybe I missed it in my previous tests, that there's now a static mesh simulation component. So that little pyramid is a static mesh and everything collapsing around it is a geometry collection and they can still interact with each other. Great, good to know. Into the next room. Hello, full-size buildings. Modular simulation example in real time. Here we see an example of a building collapsing. Performance of the sequence would vary from platform to platform and therefore makes it a good candidate for caching. We can record the sequence in each geometry collection and then play the result back with minimal computation cost. Okay, so this first one we're gonna see, this is doing all the calculations in real time. And then the next one will be a cached version of that. Now, again, I am wondering if there'd be a way to have this kind of real time simulation uh, vary depending on the specs of the hardware that it's being done on. So a higher end computer could have much finer detail and much, you know, tighter resolution as we were seeing over in 2F, but I'm sure that will be better understood very soon. <laughs> okay, here we go, let's do it. We got a detonate button, bam, boom. There we go, it's a nice domino effect. I'm guessing there's some trigger volumes there, yep, that activate each of the next ones. So I'm on a, an RTX 2080 running on a laptop. This is a, a GE75 Raider, eight, 5G or 8SG, I forget, from MSI, and that ran pretty smooth. Mind you, most of my projects are in VR, so I do wonder how that would look in VR. Maybe I'll give that a test. And okay, we can open up these little info boxes. Several geometry collections, simple structure. Yeah, you can do that. Every asset has a unique solver. This ensures the simulation is contained. Right, so again, about optimization, but I'm pretty sure this next room is going to be the, the most optimized version of this. So this will all be cached. Yep, cached simulation example. Right, geometry collections now switch from dynamic and static states to kinematic, and their target caches are set to play. And I bet this will run pretty smoothly on just about any reasonably new <laughs> computer. Right, so again, nothing here is happening real time. Basically, this whole simulation was uh, simulated ahead of time. And now it's just playing it back as though it's just a, a standard animation. Yeah, that looked super smooth. Oh, hello. Yep, simulation caches are embedded into a level sequence. There we go, just like an animation. Yeah, there you go. And you can control other parameters such as starting position and playback speed. So maybe you actually want something to start a little bit later in a simulation. That's all available to you if everything is cached. All right, and that's it for the geometry collections map. In the next video, we'll look at Chaos Examples 2, the fracture map.